Welcome. Thanks for watching. I am Chris and this is Sarah. We are sports nutritionists and registered dietitians at the Endurance Edge and we are here to talk to you all about the gluten-free diet and can it help your performance? Yes. So let's kind of rewind a little bit and talk about what gluten actually is. So Sarah, will you define it for us? Yes. Yeah, so gluten is actually a protein in wheat, rye, and barley. Um, it's one of the structural proteins. Um, the other structural protein is also called gliadin. And so a gluten-free diet is basically going to be excluding anything that has wheat, rye, or barley in, uh, in it. Yeah. Um, so Chris, do you kind of want to talk about why, why, do, like, why do we care about this protein or what is its significance and the importance of it in, in yeah. products like breads and things that have wheat? Yes. So... One of my favorite classes <laughs> in dietetic school was uh, Principles of Food, and we baked a lot of very unhealthy things to, yes. to talk about the different properties of various foods, and one of them being gluten. So gluten is important, particularly when we're talking about um, bread and uh, like pizza dough, because it forms a very specific network, almost like a mesh that can help air and CO2 bubbles because the yeast eats the sugars and the byproduct of that is CO2 bubbles or CO2 gas and that helps to let the bread expand. So it creates this sort of desirable texture mm -hmm. and volume in breads and doughs, which is why gluten-free breads and doughs are not They're very nearly dense. Dense, right, yes. They're very dense because they don't have that gluten structure. So. It's significant from a baking perspective and from a, a food supplies perspective. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, there are really only one specific condition that warrants being strictly on a gluten-free diet. So tell us about that. Yeah, so that is celiac disease. So celiac disease is an autoimmune disease where the protein gluten um, kind of destroys the villi that's in your small intestine. So the villi are like finger-like structures. And those are what grab the nutrients. Like sponges. Yes. Yeah. Well, grab the nutrients so you can absorb them and get all of those nutrients to help with things like oh, maintain overall health and wellness and growth development, all of that stuff. And performance. Yes, yeah. and performance as well. Um, so for people with celiac disease, when they eat gluten, those villi get damaged and they kind of like fall over. And so they aren't able to absorb all of those nutrients. So that leads to things like malabsorption, anemia, things like that. Um, so celiac disease is really the only condition where a strict gluten-free diet is going to be beneficial or kind of be necessary. Yeah. Um, there are other sensitivities and allergies, if you will, to gluten and things like that. And so, Chris, do you want to tell us a little bit about the difference between that and celiac? Right. So celiac being the autoimmune condition, basically your body attacks itself. Um, but with a, a wheat allergy... Um, I haven't necessarily heard of a specific gluten allergy, mm -hmm. but a wheat allergy where your body views wheat, which is one of the components of gluten, um, or has gluten in it, um, it views as that as an invader, so it fights back and has a very specific allergic response where you might have hives, you mm -hmm. might have um, you know, a swollen tongue, or as severe as something like anaphylactic shock. It's so just obviously like, a wheat-free diet. It doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily have to be a gluten-free diet, Correct. but a wheat-free diet for sure is um, warranted in that particular case. Non-celiac gluten sensitivity is a little bit more wishy-washy, shall mm -hmm. we say, because there's no specific criteria for diagnosing it yet, um, other than really a, a elimination diet and a, and a re-challenge and judging symptoms based on that. Um, we have plenty of people who explore that avenue um, in working with us here. Um, eliminating gluten doesn't necessarily mean it's the end of the world. Like you're not necessarily eliminating a whole lot of nutrients mm -hmm. or a whole um, lot of food even. Right. So uh, if it's done correctly, it really shouldn't even be an, an issue. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay, cool. You want to touch on hidden foods potentially? With gluten-free diet, so whether you're doing it as experimentation for sensitivity, whether you're just interested in seeing how it works, or if you have celiac disease, um, you don't just have to be careful of products that are kind of obvious, like breads and pizzas and pastas. 
It could also be in engineered products like sports bars. It could be in supplements, in some medications. So if you really do have um, celiac disease, you can go to a website. It's like celiac medications or gluten-free medications. We'll, we'll put the link in the We'll link the website, yeah. but it'll kind of give you a list of all the medications that are safe or ones that have gluten in them, just so you're aware. Right. Yeah. Um, so and yeah. Twizzlers. Sorry, Twizzler lovers. Twizzlers, beer, them. soy sauce, so it's not <laughs> just... Um, have you had these people who are like, oh, I'm on a gluten-free gluten diet? As they're drinking their beer. Yeah. yeah. No, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you've eliminated bread products, I mean, that's... Soy more... sauce is a is a common one. Unless yeah. you get a very specific uh, tamari or a gluten-free soy sauce. But yeah, that's a common uh, hidden source, if you will. Exactly. So yeah, so... Um, but there are things that are naturally gluten-free that are really good for you, like fruits and vegetables, vegetables and, and meats and eggs and uh, oils. Nice. And yeah. Nice. yeah. Yep. Quinoa. Um, buckwheat is actually probably a common one that people think have wheat in it, but it's not. It's actually a, I think it's actually a grass. Yeah. It's, like a seed the grass. name's confusing. Yes. Okay, cool. So next kind of segue is going to be the popularity of the gluten-free diet. I mean, this has really exploded yes. over the past couple of years. Yeah, like five or so years. Yep. Um, it's kind of like the new fat-free fad. Um, if you go in the grocery store, everything is labeled gluten-free, like bananas, which didn't have gluten to begin with. <laughs> uh, so it's it's definitely increasing in popularity. Um, proposed people say they go for it because of health benefits, because it helps GI issues, they think they're sensitive, or they've been diagnosed with celiac disease. So it's definitely widely growing, um, which is good for those who do have celiac disease, because that means the products out there are growing as well getting, and getting a lot better. better yeah so we were talking about earlier gluten-free pastas have improved tremendously over the past couple of years and they're not as dense and cardboard like yeah and just kind of gross as they were a few years yeah. ago um so it's definitely increasing in popularity yeah um like crackers have gotten a lot better some of my favorite crackers are gluten-free diet I, I, I don't have to be on a gluten-free diet but i just prefer them yeah but, nut thins are my yeah. favorite cracker and I'm not, I don't need to be gluten-free for any reason for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Um, yeah, so we see that this trend is definitely um, exploded and it's taken off in the market. But does that mean that everybody should be doing it? And does that mean that it's going to help our performance? Yeah. So go ahead and jump into that study that you found. Yeah, so a study in Australia looked at 1,000 competitive athletes, and they found that 41% of those athletes uh, were following some version of a gluten-free diet. And some reasonings that the athletes cited were for they thought it was healthier, they thought it alleviated GI symptoms, they thought it would improve performance. And um, their stool consistency was better. We like to talk about poop. Here. Yeah, who doesn't love poop? <laughs> we like good poopers. Did here. you do your duty today? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and so this study looked at how many of those were actually diagnosed with the gluten sensitivity or celiac disease, and about only 13% were diagnosed. Um, with a condition that they needed to kind of avoid gluten. Mm -hmm. um, and then researchers interestingly did another study to see if there was any performance benefit. So they took 13 athletes, males and females, I think there was like eight males and five females, and they looked at them following a gluten-free diet and them not following a gluten-free diet. Mm -hmm. And basically overall they found that there was no significant difference between the two, um, no significant difference in performance, in GI symptoms, so there's really no beneficial or negative effect to following a short-term gluten-free diet for those who don't have celiac disease. Right. Which makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if you have to be on a gluten-free diet, if you're somebody who has celiac disease and your health is potentially, uh, would potentially be um, hurt from mm -hmm. that, then sure. Makes sense. You're going to find a benefit in following yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so, and there are several other research studies that we found that basically pointed to the fact that you know, it doesn't help performance necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, however, it's also not gonna hurt it either. Yeah. So if it's something you want to explore, um, we're all for it. I think a lot of people see success in the gluten-free diet is because they're eliminating a lot of those starchy carbs like breads and pastas and prepackaged products, Pies, cookies, yeah, cakes, all that peppers. stuff. And they're choosing more whole foods like fruits and vegetables, yeah. beans. And so they're seeing success in weight loss or how they're feeling. And so if it gets you to eat more fruits and vegetables, I say go for it. Try it out. Um, yeah, yeah, that's kind of my take on I, it. Yeah. I agree. And I, I think there's um, 
there's kind of a saying in the scientific world, you know, the placebo effect is the strongest effect, and mm -hmm. that's that could be the case. I mean, if you eliminate gluten and you feel like you perform better, whether you are or not, yeah, it doesn't okay. want to feel better. <laughs> um, sure. I mean, it's it's again, it's not going to hurt you as long as you're making wise choices and you're choosing good quality, high antioxidant foods like fruits and vegetables and good quality meats mm -hmm. and um, dairy products and um, you know even um, edamame mm -hmm. and beans and other healthy grains. So. Uh, which are all permitted on a good quality gluten-free diet. Mm -hmm. So um, so in summary, will a gluten-free diet help your performance? Probably not, but it also won't hurt your performance mm -hmm. unless you actually need to be. Um, it will help your performance if you, have, if you need to be on a gluten-free diet. Um, anything else you want to I just think, um, tie it up with a bow? Yeah, if you're trying out the gluten-free diet for whatever reason, unless you're celiac disease, um, just focus more on the, the foods you're choosing and don't get so caught up in, I'm gluten-free, yeah. but you're eating just like gluten-free pizza. Plus it's expensive. It is, and gluten-free macaroni gluten -free and cheese. Gluten-free products, that is. Not a good, wholesome diet. No, the like engineered products, yeah. because... I mean, I a mean, box of those nut thins are, are like crazy expensive. Like four or five dollars a box. Yes. Like, that's it's because the Box food industry, Ritz yeah. yeah. I know, you can buy Ritz for like a dollar. <laughs> anyway. Anywho, the food industry is caught on to the trend, and so they're, you know, they're going to make their money. Um, so yeah. just just be aware, choose whole foods, um, and don't get so caught up in all the marketing schemes. Yes. Like a gluten-free apple. <laughs> That's like two dollars more expensive. <laughs> oh goodness! All right. So if you have any comments, be sure to leave those below. If you like the content that you uh, heard here today, make sure to give us a thumbs up because that helps us put out these um, videos for your education, which is what yes. you guys just saw. So again, thanks for watching, and we will catch you next time. Thanks. <laughs>